A key question in particle motion is how far can a particle travel under its own inertia if it's injected into still air? Um, it'll eventually slow, it'll slow down and eventually come to a stop. And this question is important for removal of particles by control devices or filtration, deposition in the respiratory tract and onto environmental surfaces. Really to answer this, we need to look at the question, how does velocity of the particle change with time? To answer this, we can use Newton's second law, F equals MA, and set it equal to the drag force, which is the force that's acting on the particle to slow it down. So we'll write F equals MA. We're gonna write, rewrite the MA term. We'll write the mass as the density times the volume. So we have rho sub P times pi over six d sub p cubed for the volume. And now I'm gonna write the acceleration as dv dt. How does velocity change with time? Well, that's acceleration. I'm gonna set that equal to the drag force, which we determined in our derivation of this terminal settling velocity to be three pi mu d sub p v divided by c, the Cunningham slip correction factor. Now I can rearrange this and solve for dv dt, and it's equal to minus 18 mu divided by rho sub p, d sub p squared c, all times v. And this term in the parentheses, I'm gonna rewrite as minus one over tau. So we have dv, dt equals minus one over tau times v, where tau is equal to rho sub p, d sub p squared, c over 18 mu. The solution to this differential equation, the dv dt equals minus one over tau times v, is first order exponential decay. So V as a function of T is equal to V naught, the initial velocity times E to the minus T over tau. Where tau is the characteristic time kind of like a half-life. And now we're going to define the stopping distance S sub P equal to tau times the initial velocity. Tau is really the time it takes for the velocity to decay to one over E of its initial amount, or about 0.3, about 37% of its initial velocity. So now we can write, solving, substituting for tau, we can write that S sub P, the stopping distance, is equal to rho sub P, D sub P squared times C times V naught divided by 18 mu. This brings us to the Stokes number, which is a dimensionless number or a group that can tell us the likelihood of a particle depositing or being captured in a certain system. So the Stokes number is equal to the stopping distance divided by the, we're gonna call it some distance scale or the dimension of the collector. This will make more sense when I draw a picture of it. So ST, the Stokes number is equal to the stopping distance, which is rho sub P, D sub P squared times C times V naught divided by 18 mu. And now in the denominator, we're gonna add this term L. Uh, the Stokes number, 
is also called the impaction number. N sub i in the textbook by work. L is equal to, for example, e.g., the radius of a bend in a tubing. So if we have some tubing and that makes this 90 degree bend like that, and we have a particle that's coming along in the flow through the tubing, and it's coming up on this bend, and it, we want it to follow, let's say we expect that the streamlines are gonna bend and follow the tubing, the curve of the tubing. But the particle has some momentum, some inertia to keep going straight as the particle comes to that turn, as the streamlines curve. And it's gonna keep going until it kind of slows down and then gets caught up in the next streamline over. And this distance sideways that it goes is our S sub P. And then the, the length of interest is the radius. So if S sub P is greater than that tube, tubing radius here, or L, then the particle is gonna crash into the side of the tubing and be lost. If S sub P is smaller than L, then the particle will kind of shift over a little bit, but it'll get carried along by the next streamline and keep going um, in the tube. We can compare our Stokes number to one to tell us whether the particle is likely to be uh, deposited or collected or not. So if the Stokes number is much greater than one, meaning that the stopping distance is much larger than the dimension of interest, that means the particle is gonna take a while to stop and it's just gonna keep going. And so particle collection or deposition is likely. On the other hand, if the Stokes number is much less than one, then the particle will follow the gas streamlines and will not be collected or deposited or removed.